topic, we'll be looking at um, equivalent errors. All right, we'll be doing um, four things today. One, we will construct a rectangle equivalent to a triangle. Two, we're going to construct a square equivalent in area to a rectangle. And I want you to know that this particular method is also a method that you can use for finding the square root of numbers. All right, so we'll be going into that one as well. Um, the third one, we are going to look at a square being equivalent to a triangle. And the last one is a square equivalent to an irregular polygon. Remember, irregular polygons are polygons with the sides not being of same length, while regular polygons are polygons with the sides being off the same length. All right, so let's move to the first one. So we are going to be looking at constructing a rectangle equivalent in area to the triangle. Now, this um, method is just um, two simple steps. Now, what we have here is two triangles, right? One is a right angle triangle, all right? So that means this line is perpendicular. And the other is what we would refer to as a scalene triangle, right? So we don't have a right angle. So we're going to look at how we approach these two um, in terms of to get the rectangle equivalent in area. Now, remember I said it's just you know, two simple steps. First thing we want to do in this case, because AB is perpendicular, we want to find the midpoint of AB. So once we find the midpoint of AB, we extend this line, and this line will be parallel to BC. Once this line is parallel to BC, then we know that um, this here would be the height of our required rectangle. So if I come here and connect from here to here, then this would be the required rectangle. All right, this is the required rectangle. Let me convert this. outline all right and let me change the color well I'm gonna change the color eventually and this one here as well all right this here is our required triangle sorry rectangle and we will trim there so this is the required rectangle Tangle. Now, if we were to find the area of this rectangle and find the area of this triangle, we will see that they would be um, equivalent. They would be equivalent. Always remember to label your um, label your, your 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 objects, right? Your figures, All right? So we want to turn off auto. We want to label these, right? So we have A, B, C. So we can call this um, D. D. And E. All right? So B, C, D, E is equivalent in area to triangle A, B, C. All right? Now let's move to what if you are given what if you are given a triangle in this particular um, format. Now you notice that from C to the baseline, which is A B, would be your altitude, right? Or also would be the height of your triangle. So if I draw a line from here, let me turn on back ortho. So if I draw a line there, right, and produce this perpendicular line then C to this line here would be our altitude we're going to find the midpoint of this line if 
finding the midpoint of that line where the triangle is we will extend this line over and again two simple steps we'll come to the base of the triangle and we'll project this line here we'll come to the base of the triangle and we'll project this line there so what you find now is that from here to here All right, so this is the length of the required rectangle. And from here to there, is our required rectangle. Again, let me copy this. So this would be, so we can call this, anything we want to call this. Um, we can call this P, and we can call this Q. All right? So the rectangle B, A, P, Q is equivalent in area to triangle C, B, A. All right? So that is all we get um a rectangle equivalent in area to a given triangle all right now let's move to the second one now for the second one we want a square equivalent in area to a rectangle now here we would have let me let me do this over here we have the given rectangle and we want a square that is equivalent in area to this rectangle. The first thing that we want to do is we want to extend the base. So we extend the base. So you might ask, how far out am I extending the base? Well, it's relative, right? We just want to extend the base to the point where we can um, draw a semicircle or, or an arc. So we'll go to circle and we come to B open it up to C so we're going to trim all right good so now what we have here is that from B to C we'll bring this arc over and it will touch the extended line so now we have a line A this point all right so let me call this line something let me give this line a, a, a name Let's call this O. Right? So this is O. So we have a new line on. This new line is AO. Alright? So what we want to do is we want to find the midpoint of AO. So I connect A to O and I want to find the midpoint of O. So I go to circle there. And once I open it up to O, then I know that that is my semicircle. Let me just trim below here just as a means of tidying up our drawing all right so now this is our semicircle now it's easy it's finished now all i have to do is extend from b to once i extend b to the semicircle this here this line here is the length of one of, is the length of one of the sides for the required square all right so as easy as that so all i have to do now is i'm going to extend this line let me turn on ortho so i'm going to extend this line and if i go to circle put it here open it up to there then i know that this here from b to here is the length of a side B to there is the length of a side and then I carry this line up which is perpendicular and then what I do I carry this line across there so all I have to do now is just trim up so that now is my required square all right that's my required square
that's my required square and of course always label your objects so we can call this S T R. So we have square B R T S square B R T S being equivalent in area to the square, the rectangle D C B A. All right, so that's good enough. Now, remember now, this particular method can also be used for finding the square root of a number. Let's move to that. All right, so here we have how to find the square root um, geometrically. So in this case, let's find the square root of 9. We want to find the square root of 9. All right, we will have a constant, which is 10. That means it's going to be our multiplier. All right. Therefore, 1 times 10 give us 10, and 9 times 10 give us 90. Basically, what I'm saying is that if I want to find the square root of 9, then I can conveniently use 10 as my multiplier, because 1 times any number will give you about the number. So therefore, the length of my rectangle, I'm going to draw a rectangle, the length of my rectangle will be the length of the number that I want for, to find the square root. In this case, it will be 9. And the height of my rectangle would be my multiplier, which would be 1. But 1 and 9 are numbers that are, you know, relatively to, are relatively small. So I'm going to be, have my, I'm going to have a multiplier, which is 10. Why 10? Because it is convenient. It could be 100 if the number was smaller. Let's say I wanted to find the square root of 0.25 then I could use 100, and that would be now 25, all right? So let's go. This is how we do it now. All right, we will then draw a rectangle, which is 90 by 10. So let's look at this now. So we draw the rectangle. Turn on or turn. Remember, we'll multiply 9 times 10, so we're going to get 90, all right? And then we're going to go up 10 because it's 1 times 10. And then we come across back 90 and then we down 10 so here is now the rectangle so what we're saying here is that we want to find let me put dimension here so this is 90 and from here to here is 10 good so this in essence would be 9 and this would essence would be 1, but we're using 10 as the multiplier. So 10 times 1 gives us 10, and then 10 times 9 gives us 90. All right. So remember what we did when we were doing the um, square equivalent to area to the rectangle? First thing we did was what? We extend this line. So we can do this first. From here to there, get our semicircle. Let's trim. And then we extend our baseline. So we extend this to there. We can trim this now. All right. And what we need is to find the what? The midpoint of this new line, the extended line. So finding the midpoint will be here. I will open it up to there. All right. Let's tidy it up and trim off below there. Now, the square root of 9 would be right here. So the length from here to there would be the square root of 9. Now, let's find what this number is. So from here to there is 30. All right? So since we have 30 there, then it means then that Thirty divided by ten will be equal to three. All right, so that's all we get. Um, three. So we've just found the square root of nine. 
just found the square root of 9 and that's how you would approach it with any other number all right moving on now we want to find a square we want to get a square equivalent to a triangle now remember each method or each procedure is building on the on on one that you learned before so we want a square equivalent area to the triangle first thing we need to do was do what in this case we have to drop a line down a, a, drop a line perpendicular from the height of the rectangle from the height of the triangle so now we have what this is the altitude so we want to find the midpoint of 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 of, of this line so finding the midpoint here is our midpoint we extend and we extend there now to get the rectangle from the base of the triangle to there from the base of the triangle to there all right so we've just located the um the tri the rectangle so if you wanted a rectangle equivalent area to the triangle then this would be it but that's not what we want what we want is a square equivalent in area to this triangle which means in that we just learned a procedure a while ago we're going to implement that now so we'll go to circle put it here at b and open it up to the height of the rectangle and then i'm going to extend b extend the base which is a b all right let me trim this now because we want to make sure that um, everything is neat and we show our construction lines in order to get our full marks all right so now we're going to find the midpoint of the baseline here and to find the triangle that's the midpoint and there we are so now what we do we construct a line from here to there let's trim this and let me trim this all right and we are going to extend let me first get a circle from here to the height there and then I'm going to extend this there and I'm going to extend this there and bring this across ensure that ortho is on and we will just trim up all right so we can now brighten this you realize that the rectangle is in construction line because we, we, we don't want the rectangle what we want is a square equivalent in area to the given triangle so what should be brightened oh sorry Right. so what should be brightened the square so the square is equivalent in area to the triangle let me trim up down here all right so we move now to the final one right and of course you know we must label our um, always label your objects all right so we'll move now to the final one so in this case we have an irregular polygon and with this irregular polygon we want for um, a square to be equivalent in area so the first thing we need to do is learn how to get the um, triangle equivalent in area to this irregular polygon so we want a point of similitude remember in previous lessons we spoke about point of similitude so the point of similitude will be a point that is common to um, two or more points. All right. In this case, the point of similitude would be D. Right. So we're going to connect A, the baseline, to D and D to B. So this here is our point of similitude. So A is common to that point and B is common to that point. All right. We're going to now extend 
the base AB in both directions. So we're going to extend AB in this direction. And we're going to extend AB in this direction. So you might ask the question, how far out should we draw the line? It's relative because all we want is to ensure that once we copy, so we're going to copy DB. So once we copy DB, so we're going to copy DB and we'll drop that right here. All right? So that, 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 this is what I'm saying now, that the length of this line should be able to accommodate whatever line you're, you're making parallel. All right, so let me trim here. And I can trim off the excess, though. I don't need the excess. All right, we're going to do the same thing over here. So we're going to copy. Copy D. Put it here. And again, we do the trimming again. Now, we're almost there. So from here to the point of similitude, to here we have a triangle so you see this triangle here 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 and 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 this line this triangle will be a triangle that is equivalent in area to this irregular polygon but what is it we want do we want a triangle equivalent in area to the polygon no the arcs for a square so we have to continue our um, construction so since we have the triangle right here where's the altitude of a triangle right here so we extend the line down and touch the base so this line that would use to touch the base now we're going to find the midpoint of that so once we find the midpoint of that we extend to the left and we extend to the right now at the end of the triangle, the base of a triangle will connect to there. And the base of a triangle will connect to there. Make sure that they're all perpendicular. Now, let me trim this. What if we wanted a rectangle equivalent in area to an irregular polygon? Then this rectangle... This rectangle and the base here would be the finished product. But we don't want the rectangle equivalent in area to the irregular polygon. What we want is the square. So what do we do? We come here, open up to there, and we're going to extend this line there. All right? And then we're going to do some trimming. All right, so what we want to do now, I want to, I want to extend from here to here so that I can have a, 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 a the, the, the line to find the midpoint. So I want to find the midpoint. See that? So we've now found the midpoint of that particular line. All right. Trim there. And we extend. From here, there. Trim the excess. Put this here. Boom top to there. And we're going to now construct a line from here to there. Up in the air. And then we carry this across there. Let's do some trimming. All right, and this now, we're going to brighten this because this is what we want. Put that into outline. And this now is our square equivalent in area to the given irregular polygon. All right.
And that's it for the lesson.